Hello again. Many of us have long suspected that the quality of the police officers whom we see has declined dramatically in recent years. The number who are currently awaiting trial for rape, sexual assault and other dreadful offences might perhaps be a sign that such fears are not wholly unfounded. Now, there is another sign that the police are not what they once were, particularly in London. The reason for this is very straightforward and obvious to almost, well, everybody. Although, as usual, nobody likes to talk about it out loud for fear of appearing racist. Because so many people in London these days are foreign or from immigrant families, and most of the police are still white, it is felt that something must be done to diversify the police force in the capital. That is to say, to use a modern jargon to ensure that they reflect the community they serve. The problem is, though, that not many black or Asian people apply to join the police in London, and those that do are often those who are ill-equipped by reason of their meagre education to gain employment elsewhere. The solution, at least to the police, has for some time been obvious. If they're not getting many black and Asian people wanting to become police officers, then they'll just have to take those who do apply, even if they can't read and write. This is not, by the way, some racist slur of mine, for it is not I who have said this publicly, but rather Matt Parr, a member of His Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary. This is the official watchdog charged with maintaining the standards and integrity of the police. In the description of this video, I give a link to an article from this morning's newspaper in which he pulls no punches. What he says is shocking for a number of reasons, and not just because he reveals that, and I quote, some applicants were being accepted even though they were functionally illiterate in English, and had difficulty writing up crime reports. Why is this? The views that this man gives will leave some of us shaking our heads, regardless of how many illiterate police officers there may now be. He says, We completely support the idea that London, which will likely be a minority white city in the next decade or so, should not be policed by an overwhelmingly white police force. This is clearly wrong. It's not just wrong from a legitimacy point of view and from an appearances point of view. It's also operationally wrong because it means that the Met does not get insight into some of the communities it polices and has caused problems in the past. So we completely support the drive to make the Met much more representative of the community it serves than it is at the moment. I have no idea at all why it should be clearly wrong that the British capital should be policed by men and women who are in the main white. But there we are. Even Matt Parr, though, who believes this to be so, can see the problem. There is, it seems, a risk of recruiting the wrong people. You will hear people from their training school say that they are taking significant numbers of people who are, on paper at least, functionally illiterate in English, and therefore just writing up crime reports has become quite difficult in some areas. Yes, I can readily believe that. In other words, police officers who are obviously incapable of doing their job are being accepted simply because of the colour of their skin. It gets even worse than that, though. You might have thought that with the scandalous number of crooked and perverted police officers who are now appearing in court, the police would be trying to ensure that they did not accept people with criminal records to join their police forces. This would present a problem for diversity though, because according to Parr, young black men tend to have a greater involvement with the criminal justice system in London than any other group. But that did not mean that they should be barred from the police. Hmm. I quote, I think the Met are doing absolutely the right thing in taking a risk on those people. They've got to, and it's the right thing to do. It's not only a necessary thing, but it is a noble aim for all sorts of reasons. 
So employing black criminals as police officers is a noble aim because it is clearly wrong that the police in London should mainly be white. No wonder the police in this country are declining in quality with men like this in charge of helping them to maintain their standards.